Hello everyone and welcome to another track guide. This week we are at Sakuba 2000 for what is a sub one minute lap. That means we're going to have a lot of laps this week. Uh, it comes at you pretty quickly. There's not really a whole lot of time to rest. Overtaking is at a premium, so really staying smooth and consistent is our best way forward for good results. With that said, let's take a look at the lap and then dive into the details on how we did it. Before we get started, let's take a look at our track conditions. We have a 29 degrees Celsius track with 20 degrees Celsius air temperature and low usage at 22%, uh, which is typically a little bit lower than what we see. We usually see moderate or moderately low whenever I randomize these track conditions, so uh, just a little bit less rubber down here in general. As for our laps, we're going to analyze this 52.349 that we did. Um, in general, I struggle with consistency in hairpins, so it was really tough to get a lap down that I thought looked good and clean in a way that you can kind of visualize what you're aiming for in a lap. So ultimately, the fastest lap is the one for us. Um, like I said, in general, I struggle with hairpins, so if you are like me in that regard, uh, it might be a little bit more difficult week to find uh, the consistency you normally want to aim for. If you're really good in hairpins, uh, you're in a really good position and in good luck for this week. Um, but yeah, obviously really, really short laps, not a lot of long runs. You're never going to touch sixth gear. So overtaking is going to kind of be tough this week as well. Um, it's pretty technical. So yeah, it's, it's going to be some, some tight, difficult racing, I think. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the lap corner by corner and talk about what we're aiming to do in each. For turn one, we're looking to start braking just after we enter this little hill and gently guide the car into the corner as we start to release the brakes. We're aiming for a late apex and a good exit, so we want to be patient while turning in and wait to get back on throttle until we know we can stay on throttle without running wide on exit. As we clip the late apex, we want to open our hands and run out to the exit curbing using as much as we can without risking touching the grass. I want to mention that with any hairpin, it can be very easy to be too aggressive on entry and overshoot the corner. By doing this, we open the door for overtakes on our inside and greatly compromise our mid corner and exit, so we want to be careful not to push too much on entry here or in the later hairpins. Turn two is easily flat out and leads into turn three. The only real goal here is hitting the apex. The turn three apex and turn four braking zone are one and the same. We want to clip the apex curbing and stay right as we start to brake and set ourselves up for turn four. With turn four, we have another hairpin and our goal here is pretty similar to turn one. That said, we also have some banking to work with, which allows us to get a little bit tighter earlier in the corner than we otherwise would if it was flat. As we ease off the brakes, we commit to the corner and our goal here is to get the car settled into the lower part of the corner to use the banking, which allows us to maintain good speed and reduce our distance traveled at the same time. Once again, we want to be patient on throttle to make sure we can stay on throttle through the exit without any corrections. For me, this has generally been right around mid-corner. As we exit the corner, we come out of the banking and we're looking to once again use as much of the curbing as we can without touching the grass or running wide. As soon as the car is settled on exit, we want to immediately move back to the left side of the track to prepare ourselves for turn 5.
turn five is a pretty quick corner, and our goal here is to focus on a clean exit to make sure our car is in a good position to avoid corrections as we head through turn six that immediately follows it. If we did a good job moving back over to the left after exiting turn four, we can be pretty aggressive with our hands on turn in here. A quick dab of the brakes will help rotate the car as we turn in sharply and lift off throttle. We want to keep our eyes at the apex and as soon as we get there we're looking to commit back to throttle pretty aggressively. On the exit we're looking to use all of the striped curbing as we set up to turn back to the left through turn 6. There is some extra pavement on the outside of the curb on exit here but I found if you have to use that it generally makes the change of direction for turn 6 more difficult. Turn 6 should be easily flat out, and our goal here is to scrub the tires as little as possible as we make our direction change from the exit of Turn 5 through Turn 6, heading down to Turn 7. Turn 7 is the tiny kink before the Turn 8 hairpin, and it's pretty similar to Turn 3 in that it essentially marks our breaking point for Turn 8. As soon as we pass the apex here, we want to have the car as straight as possible and as far to the left as we can as we start to brake for turn 8. The banking of turn 8 is a little bit more slight than turn 4, but we can use it in a similar way. As we come off the brakes, we want to get the car settled into the camber here to help us maintain speed and get back on throttle as early as possible. We're looking to get as close to the apex as we can while getting back on throttle right around mid-corner. As with any exit, we're waiting to commit to throttle here until we know we can stay on throttle through the exit. As we exit the corner, the car will get light as we crest up over and out of the banking, so watch for small wiggles of the rear, and we're looking to join up with the striped curbing as we head down to the final corner. Turn 9 is the fastest corner on track and probably the most important. Our run through the corner and exit sets us up for the most likely overtaking and defending zone in turn 1, so any attack or defense is likely to start with turn 9. Whether you're attacking or defending, maintaining good speed through the entry and exit here will give you the best opportunity to hold and gain positions. We'll look to start turning in just as we reach the blue tire stack on the left, and we want to gently brake and guide the car towards the apex curbing. We want to focus here on not braking too much and carrying as much speed towards the apex as we can. Once the car is on the right path, we're looking to be patient before we commit back to throttle. If we get on throttle too early, the car will push too far wide on exit and we'll lose all of our momentum. As we reach the red and white curbing, we can start to get back on throttle, and we want to keep our attention on exit here as we look to use all of the green pavement while avoiding the grass. All of the green pavement on exit is fair game, and by aiming to use it, we extend the track, which allows us to get on throttle a little bit earlier and carry more speed down the main straight as we finish our lap and brace ourselves for another one. As always, I want to give just a huge shout out to everyone who's liked, subscribed, followed, come in, hung out with me on Twitch, uh, who's asked questions, made suggestions, all that kind of stuff. I do also want to say that I finally did like open up my own personal Discord, so if you do want to come ask me questions or anything like that, uh, I will leave a an invitation link in the description of this video so you can come and join the Discord uh, and chat me up if you don't feel like you want to do that on this video uh, in the comments or, you know, can't catch me live on Twitch. But anyway, uh, until next time, good luck with your races and have fun out there.